temperature of a body is related to the kinetic energy stored within the molecules making up the body. There's three different temperature scales which people use to measure temperature. We've got Fahrenheit, Celsius and Kelvins. Fahrenheit is used in the US and we won't really be considering it in this course. Fahrenheit is named after a guy with the surname Fahrenheit who defined the scale. He said that 100 degrees Fahrenheit was body temperature or specifically the temperature under his wife's armpits. So because body temperature varies from person to person, this isn't an especially useful scale. They still use it in the US, but in Australia, we tend to use Celsius. So the Celsius scale is defined off two points. We've got zero degrees Celsius is the temperature at which ice melts at atmospheric pressures and temperatures. And 100 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water boils at atmospheric pressures and temperatures. You'll find it is actually important that it's at those atmospheric pressures and temperatures. If you try and boil water on top of a very high mountain, there's a lot less pressure and the water actually boils at a much lower temperature. So it's very hard to brew tea on top of a very high mountain. So the Celsius scale is defined off those two temperatures. And then we've got 100 degrees between ice melting and water boiling. The Kelvin scale is, is similar to the Celsius scale in that a change of one degree Celsius is the same as a change of one degree Kelvin. But temperature is actually special. There's a minimum temperature called zero Kelvins or absolute zero. And this is where in classical physics, all motion ceases. We know now that that classical picture isn't 100% right around zero Kelvin, quantum effects start to come into play, we get Bose-Einstein condensates and things formed. But in classical physics, particles vibrate, the amount of vibration is proportional to their temperature because that's proportional to how much kinetic energy they have and when they stop vibrating, if they're not moving at all, that's defined as zero Kelvins. So zero Kelvins is equal to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And classically, we cannot get below that temperature. It's impossible. So to give you some perspective, the temperature between the stars is around about 3.2 kelvins. So that's very, very cold, around about minus 270 degrees Celsius. The temperature at which ice melts in kelvins is 273.15. And then water boils at 373.15 kelvins. Now there's lots of physical properties of materials that actually depend on the temperature. Some of the physical properties of materials that depend on temperature are the volume of a liquid. What I've got here is a flask with some water with food dye in it and a capillary tube. I'm going to hold on to it with my warm hand. As I'm holding it, I'm transferring heat from my hand to the liquid causing the temperature of the liquid to rise, and this is causing the volume of the liquid to rise. You can see that the liquid is rising up through the capillary tube as its volume increases. The volume of solids also changes as their temperature increases. Solids tend to expand as the temperature increases. And this is why on roads, the engineers leave a little spacing in the road, often filled with a foam every 25 to 50 metres or so, so that when the surface of the road increases its temperature on a hot day and the volume increases, it doesn't cause the road surface to buckle and crack. You can also see this in houses. In extreme climates, you have lines down between some of the rows of bricks in houses, which is filled with a foam into which the volume of the bricks can expand on a hot day. This is also important for railway lines. So railway lines have little spacings between the sections of the track so that when the temperature increases and the volume increases, the railway lines don't buckle. When we have record highs of temperatures, sometimes this can still be an issue. And so 
sometimes the tracks do buckle if the space left hasn't been adequate. Other properties that depend on temperature can include colours of substances. Mood rings, for example, change colour based on the temperature. And this same technology is used in the thermometers that you can stick on the side of fish tanks. They change colour to indicate the temperature of the water inside the fish tank. The pressure of a gas at constant volume is also dependent on temperature, which is why it's very, very kept which is why it's very, very important that we're careful with how we store gas bottles. Gas bottles have a fixed volume. If we increase the temperature of that gas bottle by putting it in a fire or in any other way, then the pressure of the gas inside the gas bottle increases and this can cause the gas bottle to explode. So this is why people are very careful with where they store gas bottles. And the volume of a gas at constant pressure can also change. A good example of this is the Earth's atmosphere. The pressure of the Earth's atmosphere is constant because it's set by the gravitational pull of the Earth acting on all the gas molecules in our atmosphere. During the day, the atmosphere heats up and the top of the atmosphere actually rises a bit. Then overnight, when the atmosphere cools down, the top of the atmosphere actually falls back down a bit closer to the earth. So the height of the top of the atmosphere varies depending on the temperature. So temperature is usually measured with a thermometer. How a thermometer works is it's filled with a liquid, in this case a red liquid. Traditionally they were filled with mercury, but because mercury is toxic that's no longer used. We place the bulb of the thermometer on the object that we want to measure the temperature of. We then need to wait for the bulb to reach what's called thermal equilibrium with the object that it's touching. They're at thermal equilibrium when there's no heat flowing between the two objects. When it's reached thermal equilibrium, the liquid has then expanded to the amount it will expand for that liquid at that temperature and we use this to read off the temperature of the object. So for example, my hand, when it's reached thermal equilibrium with the end of this thermometer, it takes a little while for the heat to flow from my hand to the thermometer but my hand is at around 31 degrees Celsius. So we tend to not measure people's temperature by measuring their hand as the extremities of our body tend to be cooler than the core of our body. When we look at heat transfer mechanisms, we'll consider why that is.